it was as if all my small knowledge of makeup just flew out of my head that day. Like I did not know how to do anything again. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dalapa Richards. If you're a new subscriber, you're welcome. And if you're an older returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. Today's video is a get ready with me. You guys, I feel like I have not filmed in so long, in such a long time. I've definitely missed filming. I mean, a lot has been going on. I currently run two businesses, not one any longer. I'm sure I've spoken about it. I might have spoken about it in my previous videos, but I'm running two businesses, Prettified Makeovers, which is my makeup artistry business, and All Things Prettified, which is my retail beauty um, supply store, so to say. It's a retail business where we sell beauty products, beauty items so it's not it's not a walk in the park i said it in a couple of my videos that i am a student we are currently on strike and i'm doing my best to make the best the best of the best use of this strike so that's why i've been away because i've been doing a lot of work so yeah so this week currently is content week for me my schedule so i've decided i'm going to set this week aside to film content so that i'll be able to post on my youtube channel because i've actually missed filming um today i have with me in the room my niece my niece actually you guys have met oba in my old videos but here is oba's younger sister and she's probably going to be making a lot of noise so please and please just ignore so today's video is a get ready with me i'm going to be doing my makeup and i'm going to be using a couple of products that i haven't used um these are mac cosmetics products some of them i've used before and some of them i've not even used ever before so i'm going to be doing like I'm not going to be reviewing the products probably i'll just chip in one or two thoughts that i have on the products but the thing what i'm going to be like majorly doing in today's video is a q and a i put together a couple of questions that i believe upcoming or aspiring makeup artists would have um in mind like just questions that they wish to um have answered i don't know if that makes sense but yeah so i decided to put together these questions and answer them based on my own experience as a makeup artist as a professional makeup artist i'm going to be answering the questions while doing my makeup but majorly the products i'm going to be using today are from mac cosmetics let me show you guys the products i have here so i have this um i recently purchased these products actually for my business of course um, but I decided to do a full face of using the products, you know, just because I mean Just because um, this is Mac Studio fix perfecting stick. I have this one here. This is in the shade NW 35 Yeah, this is what it looks like So it's a roll-up product. It's like a stick foundation slash concealer so I have here Mac Studio Fix Fluid, Mac Studio Fix Fluid in the shade NC30. This is obviously lighter than my skin tone, so I'm going to be mixing it with one of my foundations. I'm still trying to decide whether to use this one for my foundation today. This one is also lighter, but it's still closer to my skin tone than this one. So I'm going to decide along the line as I film this video. I have here the Mac Mineralize Skin Finish um in the shade medium dark yeah this is what that looks like yeah so i'll be using this i'll most likely be using this to set my highlight areas because obviously it's lighter than my skin tone i have the mac mineralized skin finish in the shade give me sun yeah so this one is like very close to my skin tone so i'll be using this for my face shade i have the mac bronzing powder in the shade matte bronze so this is what that this one looks like and this is what the shade looks like so i'll be using this to bronze my face i also have here this mac blush this is in the shade peaches this is what it looks like i'll be using this as my blush for today um, I have here MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Highlighter and this is the shade Soft and Gentle 
it's um so these mac products they come with like a cap on them so this is what it looks like i wanted to get um i can't remember the name there's one that's more popular than this one i think that's gold deposit or something like that i'll put the name on the screen but i couldn't get that so this was the one i could get my hands on and i've tried it before it's it's pretty okay although it's very light so you have to use a little amount of this product but yeah i'll be using this today for my highlights what else do we have here i have this mac studio finish concealer this is what i'll be using to highlight my face this is the shade nw25 this MAC lip, um, MAC paint lip lacquer, it's like a liquid lipstick and this is in the shade Painted Desert, Painted Desert rather, Painted Desert. So I'll be using this as my lip color. I want to match my top, so I'm going to be doing like a coral or orange lip kind of situation. Even my eyeshadow will probably be orange. Um, lastly. The product, the last MAC product I'll be using today is this MAC lipstick in the shade Honey Love. So this is like a nude tone. So I'll most likely put this at the center of my lips to kind of blend the orange. Um, yeah, so that's that about the MAC products that I'll be using today. Like I said, I might not really be explaining what I'm doing. I really just want to enjoy my makeup process today, try out new products and answer questions. So that's the vibe for today's video. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. All right, guys. So the first question here is, I'll be answering the first question and this um, Q&A that's my niece in the background please just just ignore her so um i'll be starting off with my primer this primer is from maybelline just a little bit of that so this q and a is basically targeted at um i want to kind of give advice on how to position yourself as an upcoming makeup artist especially in a um, market that's like saturated um, so that's kind of like what I'll be talking about in today's video um, How to position yourself. That's what the questions are target targeted at answering um, So the first question here says how do you handle a situation? Where a client is not happy with their look so um, I would say that well before I start a booking or before I start doing somebody's makeup I usually ask them questions and that's something I would advise you to do because makeup artistry as a business is not is really not just about you yes you have your techniques yes you have your style of makeup application but at the end of the day it's about your client satisfaction especially when you're doing it as a business and I believe these are the people I'm, I'm speaking to in this video so you want to put your client first and how do you do this before you start their makeup ask them okay so what what direction would you like this look to take what um what eyeshadow would you like to have what kind of lipstick would you like to have how do you like your skin work done i said in there was a video i did with um debbie dara and by the way if you guys would like to have um if you like me to bring back that series of another makeup artist doing my makeup let me know in the comments which makeup artist you would like me to bring to the channel so the last or the first makeup artist we brought was um debbie dara if you haven't watched that video please go and watch it now so in that video i was saying that sometimes i even show my clients the the mirror like oh this is what your makeup is looking like right now maybe if i finish the eyeshadow i try to show them just in case just to be sure that okay i can go on because at the end of the day when you are done with makeup it's it's, it's kind of harder to correct something than when, when you are still working on it so number one you need to ask your client what they want be sure of your clients needs so that you can meet their needs number two always give room for like corrections you know just try and ask questions would you like lip gloss would you not like lip gloss do you want a matte lipstick ask questions like it always does you good when you ask questions so just make it a habit to ask questions all right guys so for my foundation today i'm going to be mixing this mac um, studio fix perfecting stick as well as the adventure super stay foundation so i'll be mixing these two together 
to get my shade and I'll also be answering the question in the process so I'm just going to take out a bit of this product and the question says what in your opinion is the most important quality of a makeup artist so I believe that the most important quality of a makeup artist is um, I would say patience because makeup is a service based um, kind of business it's not like you're not selling a product you are rendering a service so patience is like 100 percent important like you have to be patient to be able to answer questions in a reasonable manner because like you have to be able to know how to manage people and that requires a lot of patience so i've just taken out um that mac foundation and i'm going to be mixing it with the adventure so it requires a lot of patience so i would say patience is like the most important attribute you need to know how to respond not to respond with anger but to respond like professionally you know regardless of how things go because at the end of the day things could like there's a potential for things to go wrong so you have to be able to be patient to answer questions the right way another um attribute that i would say is like very important for makeup artists would be i would say the ability to listen like to be a good listener that is so so important for you as a makeup artist you have to be a good listener like you can't be a makeup artist and you are not ready to listen when the client is saying oh this is how i like my makeup but you you are just ready to do your signature beats so you have to you have to just listen to the clients i have clients that they will tell me me eh, before when they book me like before i get to their place i'm already imagining you know the kind of lashes i'm going to wear for you like on your eyes the kind of eyeshadow i'm going to do the kind of lipstick i'm going to do and then i get to the client's place and they might just say oh please i don't like to wear lashes maybe when i ask well, what kind of lashes would you do you like to wear this is like i don't I actually don't like to wear lashes i don't wear lashes so i won't say oh because um i want my makeup to look come out a certain way when i post it i will now force them to wear lashes no you have to be a good listener basically i think that's an important attribute for makeup artists as well so i'm just going to finish up my um, foundation application and i would move on to the next question all right guys so now that my foundation is done foundation application is done i'm going to move on to highlight highlighting my face and also answering the next question so the third question says and for my highlights of course i'll be using my mac studio finish concealer the third question says what is your favorite celebrity makeup look and why hmm what is my favorite celebrity makeup look i don't know i don't really know how to answer this question like do you mean well okay let me just answer it the way i think the question is directed at so i would say tokema kinwa's makeup looks are my favorite because her makeup is always snatched if you don't know anita browse is tokema kinwa's makeup artist and her makeup is always on point like token makinwa's makeup is always on point token makinwa and i would also say sharon oja because sharon oja's makeup as well is always on point their looks like even down to their outfits like it's always in sync and their makeup is always clean you never see like over the top makeup on token makinwa or on Sharon Oja. I know Sharon Oja also, I think Anita Browse, TA um, Lamod, um, also, I hope that's the pronunciation of that or her business name, but she also does, um, she also does Sharon Oja's makeup as well. So I really love how they keep Sharon Oja's makeup and Token Makinwa's makeup fresh and clean. Like, I'm always in awe. So I think I would just say, 
Tokema Kinwa and if I had to say two people, I would say Tokema Kinwa and Sharon Oja are my favorites because their makeup is always looking flawless. So I'm just going to blend this out and move on to the next question. Alright guys, so right now I'm going to be moving ahead to set my highlight areas and my thoughts on the products so far is that these products are very creamy. They are not matte, like extremely mattifying products. As you can see, my skin is glowing, it's dewy, but it's, it doesn't feel like I have products on my face. So they are lightweight products, but they are not matte, like they are not super matte. And the good thing about this is the fact that they are creamy. See, see my niece is bringing out her clothes from her, her wardrobe and pouring it on the floor. Please. I can't even just, I can't go there right now. Anyway, the good thing about creamy products is that they give you enough time to blend. And even when, like maybe while I'm talking now, of course, my under eye could potentially crease like there's a potential that my under eye is going to crease because the product is creamy and it's not matte or drying i can talk as long as i want to talk because i know that i'll just go back and use my brush to blend it out so i really love the finish of this product like look at that glow y'all and this is just concealer and highlights and i also did a bit of contour with um this bobby brown concealer here is it's a dark shade this is the shade almond so i mean that's that's like really good like look at how good my skin is looking so i'm going to go ahead now and set my face i'm going to be using this mac uh, mineralized skin finish in the shade medium dark to set my under eyes and i'm going to be using mac mineralized skin finish in the shade give me sun to set the rest of my face and i'll be answering the next question all right so the next question says how do you stay abreast of the latest beauty trends so i'm going to say that honestly when it comes to beauty trends like there's always a new trend there's always a new makeup hack a new this a new that every day when it comes to beauty when it comes to makeup so honestly i've never been one to follow trends like back to back before you see me doing something that maybe just came out i take my time so i would say that take your time before you follow any trend yes it might look like it's new but at the end of the day and it might look like everybody is doing it because obviously we're in the social media area era where you know trends are things that keep you um keep your page like interesting and stuff but at the end of the day as a professional makeup artist because you are not just you are not only a content creator because obviously because of your social media and there's a content creation aspect to that you also have to recognize that you're not just a content creator you work on actual clients you're not just doing makeup for the gram so you have to take your time before you follow trends do your research as well do your research people that you see that are following the trends watch reviews on 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 their um pages like look out for their review on the trends if you maybe you, you are looking into following a particular trend go on youtube and research oh okay find out what people are saying about that particular style of makeup for example i'm going to give it like a personal example when it comes to trends so cream blush using cream blush like it kind of blew up i would say maybe 2019 2020 cream blush just blew up like people did not really used to use cream blush as much as they did 2020 2021 i would say because that was when it blew up and like everybody started using cream blush and i think a major part of that was when tm essentials came out with their um blush i don't know what it's called i forgot in cheek glaze yeah when i saw the trend i mean a lot of people were using it and of course because this is a new thing in nigeria their videos were getting a lot of traction but before i stepped into that um trend or before i began to look into it i had to 
take a chill pill like okay because my my normal blush technique powder blush was working just fine right so i i took my time to do my research on cream blush application why you should use cream blush because it's not just enough for something to be a trend you have to know why you should implement it into your skin into your makeup routine and another thing i did was to research on how to use cream cream blush properly because i was seeing different different ways that people were using cream blush there were people that were using it too much like the whole cheeks would be red or orange or pink like it wasn't just looking so appealing to me or to my style of makeup so i took my time i you know i took my time to research on how best to use cream blush on african skin because my clients are african mostly african the larger percentage of my clients or my clientele or my audience are african africans so i had to make sure i learned how to use it to benefit african black skin and not just because i want to follow a trend and you know i later on found out like in my research during my research i found out that okay blush is actually one of the things that disappears fast on the face so using cream blush kind of creates like a background of pigments so that when you apply your powder brush powder blush over it it has something to hold on to and it stays on longer so that was when when i did that research and i found out that i was like oh okay so this is enough reason for me to follow this trend it took me a, a long time because i was i mean my and again there's a way you can apply powder bl yeah. powder blush and it would also show up on the skin so it all just depends on your technique so powder blush was working just fine for me but when i did my research and i found out oh okay there's a way i can use cream blush and it's not be looking hideous or funny i decided to do practice that's number three practice 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 the first one is understand why why should you follow that trend what is that trend for number two how can i follow this trend in a good way that will benefit my business and my clients and number three practice 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 so i did a lot of practice firstly i usually do my my practice first of all on myself like i am doing right now secondly i do my practice on models and so that was what i did basically i made sure i made it, all the mistakes on my model so that and then i was able to coin oh this is the right way to use cream blush then i started using using cream blush on my clients i was able to purchase the cream blush that works best for me and my clients the kind of clients i have understanding my client skin types um yeah so that's what i would say when it comes to following skin um, beauty trends you don't necessarily have to follow every trend but if you want to follow a trend make sure you do your research properly so i'm just going to finish my highlights set the rest of my face and then move on to the next question all right guys so now that i'm done with that i'm going to take this nuban beauty setting powder to bake my face i'm done setting my makeup so i'm going to go ahead to bake my face right now with nuban beauty So for my nose contour, I'm going back into MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in the shade Give Me Sun. And I'm just going to use that to cover my nose contour just very lightly. Like I said, that shade is actually my skin shade. But I'm just using it for my nose contour because I just want a soft, I just want a soft nose contour. I didn't realize I was covering my camera. All right. All right, so now that that is done, I'm going to go, I'm actually going to go off camera to do my brows because I don't want this video to be long, like I said earlier. And because of my niece that is here disturbing me, I just want to go ahead, do my brows off camera and I'll be right back to answer the next question. So now my brows are done and I decided to keep my brows on the fluffy side for today's look. So before I move on to the next question, the eyeshadow I'm going to be using today is this Morphe morphe 35m 
eyeshadow palette i'm just going to create a look as the spirit leads because i really don't have any eyeshadow look in mind so i'm just going to do something that i think would match the tone of the look i'm trying to go for so i'm going to be doing that as i answer the next question so the next question this question was actually because i put like a question um box on my insta stories and this question was from a makeup artist on my instagram and she asked this question and i'm going to be answering it to the best of my ability today first of all i mean look at my skin work guys i love the tones on my face right now like my skin work is popping i love that for me <laughs> so i'm moving on to eyes and this question this person's question says how do you get clients question mark and then she goes on to say especially when you don't have a space yet how do you get clients especially when you don't have a space yet i'm going to um break my answers down into three parts and the first part i would say is something because like you said you don't have a space yet and you're probably just starting out so i'm going to start out by giving you a tip that you can do in person which is simple it's simply network like you need to network you need to take your networking very seriously you have to actually network meet people like when you meet people don't just meet them and with the idea of oh like i'm just meeting people no talk about what you do because you won't know when they would need a makeup artist and they will just call you so that's that's a very big tip that i'm giving you networking is important don't look down on anybody network with people network with photographers and also the few makeup um the few clients you have you need to also encourage them to refer you and that also boils down to the kind of service you give them you have to give a good enough service in order for them to refer your services to their friends and family and referrals are in fact referrals are one of the things that sustains a successful beauty business because this person will meet this person and meet that person and meet that person and then they talk to this person about oh that what did my makeup that other person will book you and tell another person so referrals are really important but at the end of the day you also have to be giving quality service so the first tip like i said is networking network in person and also network on social media all right guys so i am finally done with my eye look i'm going to move on to the second aspect of my answer to that question how to get clients when you don't have a studio so um the second aspect like i said would be your social media your advertisement like you need to advertise even not just this is not just limited to social media it's also part of networking but you need to actually advertise like your business depends on it because guess what your business does depend on it so you actually need to advertise as much as you can and as often as you can talk about your brand if you have maybe you have a, um, a business page maybe let's say on Instagram and you also have a personal page talk about your brand on your personal page because you have another audience on your business page and a different audience on your personal page and those people most likely do not even know what you do as a makeup as a um, as a profession so you want to let people know what you do on your whatsapp status post about your your services let people familiarize themselves with your work advertise post your work if you practice on a on a model post your work if you if you like because at the end of the day you want people to trust you enough to tell you to come to their homes like you said you don't do you don't have a studio so obviously you only do um home service um services so to say so you want people to trust you enough to be able to invite you to their home to do makeup on them and in order to do this you have to be able to advertise even down to how you arrange your bio how you arrange your page i'm not saying you have to arrange your page in a certain way just how the kind of products the quality of um content rather quality of content that you put out also determines how people will perceive you because you want people to see you as a serious person right you want you can't you can't be posting 
TikTok dance video today and then tomorrow you post a selfie of yourself and next tomorrow you post your clients like this is a business page and your page and you have to treat it as a business right treat your social media since you don't have a physical studio treat your social media page as your office you know re respond to DMs on time um, you know reply people when they comment you know those kind of things helps people to know about your services enough to be able to want to book you so the third aspect to this um to getting clients is just focus on um quality service focus on the quality of your service focus on building your kit focus on building your skill like working on your skill focus on creating systems in your business that will make it easy for when clients start to flooding because if you are the first thing i said if you are networking secondly you are working on your social media the next thing you need to do which is actually the most important is to create systems that would help you when these people now start trooping in these clients start trooping in you need to now create systems that would make it easy for them work on your artistry so that you are able to deliver like you know because on instagram you're only going to see like a good picture like don't be deceived you are actually creating looks that they need to wear for hours and that makeup will not move in order to achieve that you need to have practiced you need to have worked on your skill worked on um attended you need to attend classes if you if you, if need be you also need to work on your timing your professionalism a lot of things goes on behind the scenes your hygiene the hygiene of your kids your mindset as a makeup artist as a whole so all of these structures you need to put them in place in order for you to receive clients once you've done all of this and you are actively you are working at getting better just don't worry clients will come all right so now i'm going to move on to apply blush like i said i'm using this bl um, mac blush in the shade peaches so i'm going to be applying that as well as highlights i'm going to do this like without talking just so that i can be fast and once i'm done applying this product i'm going to come back to respond to the next question All right, guys, so I'm done with my face. I'm literally crushing on myself at this point because see skin finish now, see eyes, see like just the skin. I love how, how rich and vibrant the skin is looking. And I'm loving the satin finish of the MAC products, especially the powders. The powders have this satin finish to it. You guys, these MAC powders, the hype is not is not overhyped at all like it is actually good they are actually good products they merge so well like everything just melted in together look at how soft the highlight is you know i told you the highlight product is like is pretty light so i only used a little bit of that i use it on my nose and just <sighs> just look at this beauty so it's time for the lips and i'm going to be answering the next question while i do my lips so the next question is I have a specialization in wedding and bridal makeup artistry. Will I be able or prepared to enter other industries? So I think this question basically means that um, this person is a bridal makeup artist and the person is wondering, so because I'm a bridal makeup artist, does it mean that I cannot do other I cannot delve into other fields of makeup so when it comes to makeup now it's always important to niche like know your niche so like know if you are an editorial artist like be able to niche down because this would even help you when um it will help you with the kind of people you interact with it will also help you with the kind of clients you attract because when you're able to niche down the right clients will be able to find you for example prettified makeovers which is my brand prettified makeovers is a 
is niched as a bridal makeup artistry brand so to say I've, i'm a makeup artist i've been a makeup artist for over five years now by november it will be six years and i've done a lot of brides and to some extent i've been able to train myself on how to cater to brides and i find that that is an aspect of makeup artistry that i really enjoy now i also do events i do makeup for o and bear i do makeup for photo shoots but when you ask me about my niche the first thing you know about me is i'm a bridal makeup artist i know how to give a quality bridal experience to every bride so that is my niche and now so does it mean that i can't do film i can't do commercials i can't do special effects does it mean that i can't do editorial no it doesn't mean that at all i am a bridal makeup artist i am also a film makeup artist and i'm a beauty artist so i'm not necessarily your editorial makeup artist i'm just going to say that does it mean that i can't do editorial i can't do it but i've just chosen not to focus my artistry on that i focus my artistry on three main things which is bridal beauty and film bridal for brides beauty you know every client i create beauty looks on my clients for their photo shoots for their events for their meetings and every every other event that they need to go to and then film i do makeup for film sets movies i've worked on a number of movie productions i've worked on in, on um, commercial productions as well for video shoots i've also worked on commercial production for shows like a comedy show that i worked on so me being a bridal makeup artist doesn't stop me in fact i think that because i was already i was already trained in the bridal aspect of makeup it kind of really helped me and prepared me to be able to delve into other aspects for example when you're working on a bride you're working with time you are working you have to work with time you have to also find a way to create multitask create content while you're working you know look out for the bride be able to like work with it with time basically because the rush is always a lot so just all of that even the things that lead up to you doing the bride's makeup the the process of the booking everything just prepares you when i started working in film because i already had a knowledge of doing makeup on brides and the whole rush of everything when i started doing film i was already familiarized with the rush so film is also a rush rush kind of um, field of makeup you have to hurry up do this scene memorize the scenes know what makeup is going to work for this scene blah 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 um commercial sets are quite different those ones are like they're not really rush rush like that you're also working with time but it's more like on a more calmer basis more like when you're doing your regular clients makeup for events so commercials are not so rush rush like that but i'll just say rush rush is mostly for bridal and film but yeah so i mean everything still prepares you in a way for every field of makeup the at the at the end of the day it all boils down to creativity and like i said it's all a thing of the mind it looks like everywhere is getting darker but please just bear with me so yeah it's all a thing of the mind you just have to prepare your mind if you need to take a class ask questions from people as well take classes you know just get yourself ready so i think those are the ways to prepare yourself for um another field of makeup yeah so i hope i've answered that question i'll be moving on to do my lips now and i'll be answering the next question as well So i'm done with my lips and i'm going to be moving on i'm going to just spray my face again and move on to the next question i have two questions left this question says do i need a different makeup training to become a celebrity makeup artist let me spray my face before i answer so i would say not necessarily i don't think you necessarily need excuse me let me get my fan so I don't think you necessarily need another type of training to become a celebrity makeup artist. Celebrities are clients as well. I would just say that the dynamics to doing a celebrity's makeup is quite different from doing a regular person's makeup because sometimes when you do a celebrity's makeup, they are probably going on the red carpet. They are probably going to 
you know, an event where pictures of them will be taken left, right, center. So you also have to kind of work on your skill and your application. Most of the time I've done makeup on celebrities. It's for maybe movie premieres, um, outings where they'll be taking a lot of pictures and they'll be making videos or for, um, for creating content and stuff like that. So I'm always mindful of the fact that I have to, my application has to be one because if you're a makeup artist, you know that application for a say 18 hour wear of makeup is different for uh, is different from application for say six hours wear of makeup for maybe a photo shoot right so your application matters i would say that but that you have to go and learn i'll just say maybe just pay more attention you just need to pay more attention yeah you also need to work on your timing most times these people are like really busy celebrities um, in particular, they are usually really busy even while you are doing their makeup. So you have to know how to multitask. Task. Um, one of my very frequent um, clients who is also a public figure, Pastor Laju Iren, when I do her makeup, she's answering, you know, work calls. She's probably, you know, working on her phone or on her laptop, you know, talking to her staff. So in the midst of all of that, I have to find a way to keep doing the makeup because we're also working with time so i can't say oh she wants to make a call i will not do anything no you have to continue i've done makeup for someone who was literally in a seminar and speaking at a seminar it was a, an online webinar so to say and i had to continue with the makeup regardless of the fact that she was speaking and you know it's not it's not like i've always had this knowledge i've always been able to do it it's, it's something that i've gained it's, an, it's a knowledge that i've gained over time of, with experience so i would just say that just to become like or if you are working on a celebrity there's nothing like i want to become a celebrity makeup I, well if that's your goal that's fine but honestly me i just want to make people look lovely <laughs> that's just me but yeah if you if you happen to have a celebrity as your client just pay more attention to your um application and try your best to learn how to multitask because most times they are usually very very busy while doing the makeup so don't see it don't just wait for them to finish what they are doing sometimes you just have to continue while they are dressing up most times when i'm doing makeup for a client of mine who is an actress when she's dressing up, well, while she's getting dressed up by the stylist, I'm finishing up her lipstick, finishing up her highlight. Doing so. so you just have to be able to calculate in your mind the kind of things you can do while they are in motion and the kind of things you can do while they are seated, you know, for the limited time that they are seated. Yeah, so I think I've answered that question. So I'm going to go on and style my hair before I answer the last question question all right guys so this is the finished look um i'm going to be answering the last question now i'm really in love with this look like it's just giving skin it's giving clean beads so i'm going to just move on to the next question now which is how did you land your first makeup job and how did it impact your life so my first makeup job was of course in 2016 i think when i started I think it was in December 2016 I had just started my brand in November 2016 and in 2016 um, Juliana Olayode who was still your baby then she um, kind of knew my sister my older sister so she needed a makeup artist for an event and then my my other sister was like ah my younger sister is a makeup artist now let her do your makeup so that was how she booked an appointment with me that was my first makeup appointment and imagine my first makeup appointment being with someone who was already a celebrity i was like i was freaking out because prior to that appointment i had only been doing makeup on myself practicing on myself practicing on my sisters but i never done makeup on an actual client and this first client happened to be Juliana Olayode. So I was really nervous. The session was actually very pleasant. She was a very pleasant client. They were even, I was shaking to the point that like I didn't, it was as if all my small knowledge of makeup just flew out of my head that day. Like I did not know how to do anything again. She was not the one telling me, oh, your beauty blender, you know, this is how you wet your beauty blender. This is how you apply lipstick. You have to line this side. Like she was literally directing me on how she wanted the makeup to look. 
and at the end of the day i'm glad she loved the look if i post the picture of this look now that look might not be you know making sense right now but as at that time as at 2016 it was okay she loved it she liked it she posted it on her page as well um so how did that um experience what's the next part of the question how did it impact my life i would say that 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 experience had been my first ever client kind of it kind of boosted my confidence because not only was she a celebrity she also was a pleasant client and you know how energy or like the vibe of your clients also affects you so that experience really helped me in the fact that it was a pleasant experience and it was my first ever experience i can't imagine if my first um, ever experience was a on an unpleasant one it would probably have affected my mindset then but because she was very nice and she even loved the look that was another thing so it kind of just boosted my confidence i was more confident to now work on other people because they would see on my page as she has done to your, to your baby's makeup then she was to your baby she has done the to your baby's makeup okay she can do my makeup so that was kind of the way people started trusting me to do their makeup until i was able to now gain ground on on my own work on my artistry work on my skill work on my style of makeup and now um people don't necessarily need to look at the type of people i book they just look at my work and say oh i want to book you so before i was able to get to this point that i'm at now then her being my first client actually helped my confidence as a makeup artist now you don't necessarily need to book a celebrity as your first few clients before you can have confidence confidence is a thing of the mind that was just what i knew then confidence now i know that confidence is all starts in your mind a successful makeup business starts in your mind um I'm just going to finish up this video just giving you guys like general tips as makeup artists you guys a successful makeup business starts in your mind it all starts here like you have to be able to see it in your mind think where do I want this brand to go in the next coming years you know when you have that vision you are able to streamline everything you do in line with that vision set targets set goals I have goals I have targets um, for my beauty business if you are doing makeup as your profession you're a professional makeup artist you must understand that makeup artistry is not just a hobby you have gone past the hobby stage because now you're doing it as a professional makeup artist meaning it is now your profession it's now your way of earning money it's now a way of earning money for you so it's not a hobby you're not an you're not a hobbyist you are now to taking it you have to take it now as a business treat it as a business because Aside from applying makeup on people's faces, there's a lot of administration work that goes down. There's a lot that goes down. And this will take me to the next point. Don't be scared to look into your numbers. You have to make sure that it's making sense. You can't just be, you can't just be doing makeup for a certain price that is not that that does not tally with the products in your kit that does not tally with your skill that does not tally with the experience you've had and also the trainings you've taken so you all of those things combine them together write them down take note like you this is a business you are running okay you are not you are not just um doing it unless you're just doing it while you wait time till you get another business if you are actually serious you actually want to do this makeup thing as a business makeup artistry as a business you have big dreams for your brand you have to actually start now start taking it serious now start putting in structures now ask people questions and that will lead me to my next point if you have any other question any further questions that I haven't already answered in this video leave it in the in the comment section i would definitely answer them i know that there are times when it will be hard everything i've said is more like oh these things are easy to say implementing them might actually be hard but just make sure you're dedicated to doing the hard work and you will see results you know as time goes by just give it a matter of time you will definitely definitely see results all right guys um thank you so much for watching this video i really enjoyed filming this video like i'm i'm glad i filmed this video i love the look i created i love the outcome of the products i use so i'm just glad i purchased these mac products because they really worked well on my skin and i'm loving 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 the results yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you like this makeup look please let me know in the comment section if i answered any questions in your heart let me know in the comment section as well and if you also have further questions comment section as well 
hit the like button on this video subscribe if you haven't and please share this video to any upcoming makeup artists you think might need to see it i'll see you guys in my next video i love you guys so much bye